Well, thank you for the chance to speak with you on a very important subject. You know, and I want to give, tell you a little riddle. What strength and force cannot get through, I, with gentle touch, can do. Many in the street would stand if I were not readily at hand. What am I? A key. Keys do all kinds of things. Keys open doors. Keys provide opportunities. Key is what we all are. Every one of us is a key to well-being in our community. We're dealing with, obviously, a disease called COVID, which we want to avoid, not get sick. However, now, when someone gets sick, anyone who's in contact with them must obey a quarantine. The result is we no longer have people to work as a police officer, people who need to be in the water treatment plant in order to make sure we have water, people who are not able to cook at a restaurant or wait on tables, people who are firefighters or drive an ambulance, people who are linemen in our electric division, keeping the electricity on. If we do not have all of these people available to work, where are we? We need to work together. Another example would be, and the next speaker is the prime example of education. If we don't have enough people in the school to teach, to do all of the other, perform the other activities so necessary for the school to be open and to provide education, then the school has to close. We don't want society to close down. If you want water, if you want food, if you want electricity, if you want to learn, we need you to be very careful about maintaining yourself and don't put us in a situation where so many people are in quarantine. I'm going to ask our superintendent to speak to the experience for the school system. Thank you. As the mayor said, your cooperation is the key to keeping our schools open. Without your cooperation, without your due diligence with your students, with your families, with your community, we cannot maintain the resources to have our schools open every day. What I mean by that is that if one person comes into our building and is positive for COVID, and that person comes into contact with three, four, five, six adults, we have to then have coverage for those adults. We have to have substitutes. And then if we multiply that to 12, 18, 24, that continues to increase our challenges to be able to provide daily services, instruction, quality instruction that our teachers don't so desperately want to provide every day because we don't have the resources. So your job, your key role, your responsibility is to help us make sure that we can maintain our services that are so desperately needed, not just to help educate our students, but we also know that many families cannot be able to, they're not able to sustain themselves without their students in school on a daily basis. So we need to make certain that we work together as a community. Make certain that if there are concerns about your child's health, that you are reaching out to the school nurse proactively, quickly. If anyone in the family has signs of sim or symptoms of COVID, that you're addressing those. If your child or yourself as a staff member in our district becomes in contact with somebody who has tested positive, let us know immediately so we can mitigate the impact. We do not want the impact to continue to increase because it does put a burden on the system. I would like to introduce the health director who will help us continue to understand what we need to do in order to make certain that we are safe, we are healthy, and we are able to all be the keys in keeping the community open. Thank you, Dr. Menzo. Uh, Steve Civitelli, the health director for the town. Uh, we have three methods in which we um, believe we can protect the community and our residents. 
by following the three W's. Wear a mask, watch your social distance, and wash your hands. Um, some of the other mitigating factors that we're looking at when we see our contact tracing in the communities, we're finding that there are a lot of private gatherings in homes that are becoming what are known as super spreader events that we're trying to avoid. The unfortunate thing of those events is it's having a negative impact on not only our businesses, our schools, and our community, um, and it's having a devastating impact on the ability to provide services from the municipality side as well as the school side. Um, so again, as the public health director, our goal is to have a safe, productive community in a, in a manner that it limits the exposure to disease. And at this point in time, as we accelerate into the fall, into the winter, as cases rise, we would urge people to please be cognizant of wearing a mask and watching their social distance um, as we continue through the winter into the, uh, from the fall into the winter. I would also urge everyone in the community to be very wary of Halloween, Thanksgiving, and other holidays, Christmas and New Year's. These are all holidays that we're monitoring. We're going to be monitoring as we get into those uh, events. And the anticipation is, is that if social distancing and the masking and these private gatherings take place, it is going to have a negative impact on not only our businesses, but our schools as well. And so I would urge you to be very cognizant and be wary and avoid close contact in some of these smaller private gatherings. Thank you. You've heard the message. I think it's a positive message. We have a way of making sure that our community continues to provide the services that we all depend upon on a daily basis. The key is working together to allow us all to be happy and healthy. We can do it. Every time you pick up a key, remember, you're a key to everyone else's success and safety. Thank you.